I've just started playing Dungeons of Sundaria, which is a dungeon crawler game from Industry Games. It released, well, full released on the 13th of December 2023, but a quick Google search will let you know there's been people playing this game for quite some time. Dungeons of Sundaria is your classic third person perspective looter. I guess you can draw comparisons to games like Diablo, although do not be expecting anything in terms of the quality of that. What it does well is have this nostalgic feeling of dungeon crawlers like they used to have in the good days and the ability for you to play co-op with three friends. What it doesn't do well? Yeah, we'll talk about that as we go on. There's a few things lacking here and I'm really hoping they're going to continue to do some updates and make this game as good as it could be. My name is Beggles. I do indie game reviews and previews. If you like that sort of thing, subscribe and you know the rest. I've got to say that Dungeons of Sundaria has a really disjointing beginning. Straight away upon loading the game on Steam, and I was given the character creation screen. There are seven races to choose from, humans, dwarves, elves, halflings, orcs, goblins, and some lizard people, and five classes, champion, ranger, cleric, wizard, and rogue. I don't think I need to tell you what they mean, but I chose ranger because that's how I go. And you have the ability to change your hair color and your eye color and all those things which pretty much are stock standard for a game like this. But that's not even the confusing part. After that, you enter your home world screen with a tavern and a blacksmith and a few other places that you can click on to find a few people to talk to. There's very little direction in terms of what you should be doing and very little storyline going on here. I fell into the first quest just by clicking on a few things and before you know it, I was being sent down into the crypts to rescue some soldier guy who's been missing before. This gave me a sense of familiarity and almost a comfort that this was going to be one of those games where you get basic simple quests, you jump into a map and you jump back out each time you finish that quest and gain your loot. Simple. Boy, was I wrong. Upon entering the crypts, I ran around for a bit and found someone who I thought might be an NPC, but turns out they attacked me, and that's where the gameplay really began. It's not that hard to get your head around the way this game works, especially if you've played any MMO or hack and slash dungeon crawler. You left click if you're doing range to attack, and you've got some abilities on 1, 2, 3, and 4 on your keyboard of which you can use. But there's a real lack of clarity in terms of what you're meant to be doing and where you're meant to be going. There's a map, but you can't expand it. There's hallways leading out everywhere. And whilst there's some icons like boss fights and things like that, it can be really easy to get lost in these dungeons. But nonetheless, it wasn't that hard to finish the first quest. And before you know it, you're moving through. You're picking up a lot of loot. I'm talking a lot of loot which might seem fun, but at some point you're going to have to sell or salvage it and spend a lot of time comparing stats which are increasing at a pretty small level. The movement feels janky at first, with things like the jump not really making sense and, and your role being useful, especially as you get further into the dungeon, but not really triggering in the way that you would normally want a game like this. I wouldn't say it's a responsive movement system. I spent a lot of time spamming F to try and loot because it wouldn't trigger on the first time and doing things like accidentally closing doors and rolling through doors as they're opening because this is one of those games that just has a bit of quality and polish missing. But as I said earlier, keeping in mind this is not a Diablo style budget so whilst the movement is a bit janky, after an hour or so I found that I wasn't noticing it anymore. You kind of get used to the idea that you're not going to have full control of movement and there's going to be times where you get stuck on things or you might just need to keep spamming your shift key to get that roll in when you need it. You're not going to be surprised to hear that there's a leveling system. Defeating enemies will give you XP which will allow you to level up. If you do choose to go back to your home world and then, and then return to your last checkpoint, the enemies will respawn which can be annoying I guess but also can allow you to farm a bit of XP. As you level up, you will unlock new abilities for the Ranger class. They were all different types of area of effects or, or high damage shots that you're going to use. And then you also get the choice of going into your menu system and rearranging which buttons your abilities are on and which abilities you want to be using. For the Ranger, there didn't seem to be any mana or anything beyond cooldowns about when you could use your abilities. And in a similar way to the movement, they're a bit janky. At times I'd be pressing a button and it wouldn't be working, I'd just have to keep pressing it. It almost felt like things were being queued up and that the ability would shoot off when it was ready. 
If you're someone that wants your action combat to be really polished, that's gonna be frustrating for you. If you're someone that's a bit more forgiving and happy to try and find the way that you like to play, then that's not gonna to be too big of a deal. For the Ranger, the abilities are different enough to make it interesting, and each time you unlock a new ability, it was fun. I really liked the zoom in power shot, so that's something that I unlocked towards the end of Dungeon 1. Let's talk a bit about what Dungeons of Sundaria does really well. And the first one I'm talk about is boss fights. I thought that I was lost on my first play around through the dungeon because I was running into so many boss fights, but that's just how this game works. You'll turn a corner and you'll be fighting some rat boss thing, and within 30 seconds, there's another one. The fights are unique with different ways to win and different strategies that you need to use, but for the most part of it, I was able to just roll and shoot. And as a ranger, it felt like the damage was pretty low. And there was probably only one boss that I had trouble with. And that's because I didn't work out how to remove their buff and deal damage to them. Saying that, the bosses are definitely a highlight of Dungeons of Sundaria. I've been playing through this solo, but I could imagine that doing it as a squad and really getting into the habit of going through quickly is going to be a lot of fun. The second thing that I have to mention is the size of the dungeons here. I'll play through dungeon one, but I've done a bit of looking into it and the rest are also the same. This dungeon is huge. I think you'll be playing for over an hour and a half on your first run through, which is unusual. As I said earlier, I was expecting the type of game where I teleport in, do a quest, teleport out and move my way around but it's completely different. You go in on your first quest to try and find some soldier who's missing and the game sort of says, well, since you're here, you may as well just keep going and seeing how far you can get. And it is far. There are a bunch of different areas within each dungeon that have different enemies and different styles. And in the first dungeon, you run into rats, you run into these zombie-like creatures, wraiths, and you'll even get to like vampires. It is really well done. The dungeon design is awesome. I must say that I'm sitting on the fence a little bit about the items though. There is a lot of looting to be had here. Every enemy drops some kind of loot and most of that will be silver, but you will get a bag full of items, clothing, weapons, shields, that kind of thing. What I found was that even though I was getting items that improved my stats, they were barely better from 10 points to 12 points in a certain area. And it became a bit annoying having to go through and really compare it. If there's a way that you could quickly compare or the ability to get items that give you a real ramp up, that would be cool. None of the items that I picked up and equipped really made any difference in terms of the way that the game played. So there's no special effects or special buffs that I found so far. Although it does visually change the way that your character looks, so that's nice. I can see why people would really like this game and I do believe it would be better and I do believe it's going to be better playing co-op using characters from different classes and really pushing your way through the dungeons together. What I'd really like to see is a bit of improvement in, in terms of the character movement and how the combat feels. It feels a bit dead when you shoot or you attack and it doesn't really give you any response or any idea about whether you're really doing well except for looking at the health bar of the enemies. I think there's a few small improvements. I think a map upgrade would be a really good idea as well. And maybe tweaking the items to make it a little bit more interesting in terms of what you're getting. Saying that, I think this game is worth checking out, especially if you like the genre and you have people to play with. That's Dungeons of Sundaria. Let me know what you think.